Hi and welcome to my tutorial on how to knit a barley hat using the magic loop method. Um, I'm going to show you how to knit this little hat here using Tin Can Knits barley hat pattern. All rights go to them, it's not my pattern. Um, it's a pattern that they designed to help teach people how to knit hats. I've used it to teach several of my friends how to knit um, and I know that they've preferred videos so I just thought I'd put a video out there for everybody. But this is the toddler size that I knit um, out of some, this is I think loops and threads acrylic from my stash. Um, the reason you'd want to use magic loop instead of let's say just using a circular or double points all the way through, um, magic loop is um, a good stand-in for double points if you don't like double pointed needles. Um, it is also a way to knit smaller circumferences that don't fit around a 16 inch circular, which the toddler and the baby size of this won't. Um, you obviously could knit it entirely on double pointed needles, but I'm not a huge double pointed needles fan, so I wanted to show you how to knit the whole hat using Magic Loop. Um, so we will jump into this tutorial. Um, if you did want to know how to knit the hat on a 16 inch 16 inch circular needle with double points at the top. I do have another tutorial which I will link I think here or there somewhere um, where I knit this guy using a 16 inch circular and then double points at the top. It's a US 8 and then a US 6 but this is an adult small also for reference and this is the toddler size. So if you want to see the magic loop stay tuned. If you want to see 16 inch circs uh, click the link. All right, let's jump into it. I forgot to add that if you have questions as we're going along, feel free to put them in the comments. Um, if I can't get to them, hopefully someone else will be able to answer them. Um, they, the question might be answered later as uh, you watch the video. So if you watch all the way through um, and you still don't have the answer, feel free to ask. I will do my best. Okay, so to knit a barley hat, on Magic Loop, we're gonna need a worsted weight number four yarn. Uh, this is just some old acrylic I have in my stash. So we're gonna use that to make a little toddler, toddler sized barley hat. Um, you're gonna need, obviously, um, needles you can Magic Loop with. Um, standard cable length is generally 32 inches. I'm going to use some interchangeables that I have, but you could just use two different circulars. I have US 6 4 millimeter tips and a 32 inch cable um, and then I have US 8 5 millimeter tips that I'm just going to switch over. Um, the technique will be the same, you just will have two sets of circulars. The types of tips I have, these guys are Nova Platinas and these are Smart Sticks, uh, both are Knitter's Pride. These have numbers on them because you can kind of use them as a ruler. Um, which means we won't necessarily need the measuring tape, but you'll need something you can measure with. Um, eventually a darning needle and some kind of stitch marker. Um, this one is from the Corner of Craft. Um, I'm going to use a stitch marker that has a little clippy on it um, because I can clip to the front of my knitting, which will make more sense in a second. Um, so I would recommend some sort of clippy stitch marker, but it's up to you, it's personal preference. Um, so yeah. Let's get to the uh, the cast on bit. Okay, so you can use any type of cast on you would like. I'm gonna show you how to do a long tail cast on. For that, you will need a long tail. So for a long tail cast on, I generally like a couple of arm lengths of yarn. Uh, it's up to you though, whether or not you wanna overshoot it or undershoot it. I generally prefer to grab more yarn instead of less because um, you can always trim the yarn. You can't add more after the fact. So I'm gonna grab a nice long tail here. For this example, I'm going to knit the toddler size um, so I can add this lovely hat to my gift pile once I'm finished. So for this size, although whatever size you're knitting will be great, um, this size has 72 stitches. Before we even actually put it on a needle, we're going to take our yarn and we're going to need to make a slip knot. So we grab our long tail is going off this way, so we're going to grab our wool. Sorry, we're gonna have our yarn. This is not wool, this is acrylic. So we have like a loop. We're going to cross it over. We're gonna make some pinchy fingers through the loop. We're gonna grab the tail of the yarn. 
that we've just made way too long and we're going to pull it through tighten it so it's called the slip knot because you grab both ends just goes away so we're going to do that again to make a slip knot so we have our yarn we fold it in half to make a loop we're going to cross it over then with our pinchy fingers we're going to grab yarn pull it through there so now we're going to grab our needle we're going to grab either end of the long cirque it doesn't matter i'm going to put it the we're going to put the loop on the needle we're just going to pull both ends of the knot to move it up there so it's not going anywhere it's attached so now we're going to do the long tail cast on the way I like to hold my yarn to do a long tail cast on is I will put my thumb and my pointer finger through near the top um, to kind of create a tent and then I grab the other two parts of the string so the tail and then the yarn going back to the ball with these bottom two fingers so I can kind of control tension. It makes this big kind of diamond shape um, which works best for me. Um, there are lots of ways of doing it, this is just my way. Um, so. To start the long tail cast on, we're going to take our needle, we're going to take it, and we're going to bring the point down by our thumb. We're going to kind of put it up to parallel with our thumb, which will create a hole. Then we're going to take the needle and scoop the yarn that's going over our back finger through, like that. Then we're going to pull the yarn going over our thumb tight so we have another stitch while you're doing this you don't want to pull the yarn too tight or you're not going to be able to move it along the needle and it's also going to make it harder for you to actually knit we have our little tent we're going to grab the needle we're going to put it we're going to bring it up by our thumb make a little hole scoop the yarn through pull it tight pull scoop through and then we'll pull just like this and you'll do this however many times you need stitches for for the toddler size I need 72 so I'm going to keep casting on until I have 72 stitches you can count them as you go or you can cast on a bunch and then count and then go from there um, to see how many you have, whatever works for you. Really whatever makes you less stressed at this point is probably the best call. Okay, so we now have our, our stitches all cast on here. Um, what we're going to do in order to be able to join the round, obviously we can't just join both ends because this is very long. Um, we're going to just fold our cable in half essentially, just like this. Um, if you want, you can count the stitches and divide it exactly in half. Normally I sort it out after I have started my ribbing and joined, um, but you can totally snap it and not snap. You can divide it in half now if you would like. I'm just going to fold it and then I'm just going to grab my cable and I'm going to pull on whatever end isn't attached to this guy. So I'm pulling this needle through up here. Normally I would just let it clack on the table, but because we're filming, I don't want to do that. Okay. So we now have our two sections of knitting. At this point, we want to make sure everything is going the right direction, because if we join this in the round twisted, we're not going to be able to fix it. Um, for example, if this was like, like this, if we have a twist in it, if we were to knit our ribbing, we would get a Mobius kind of hat, which we can't undo and fix. We can fix a lot of things in knitting without having to rip back, that is not one of them. <laughs> so we are, so we need the yarn to be coming from the needle that's going to be at the back. 
Right now I have them reversed, so I'm just gonna finagle these here very awkwardly. I kind of just folded one around the other. Um, it clanked a lot on the table, but <laughs> that's what I did. So at this point, I'm gonna make sure there isn't a twist here. The cast on edge is at the bottom of both needles, so it'll look like that. So our yarn is coming from our back needle. We're going to do, I'm just gonna scooch that back a little bit. We are going to grab this back needle and we're gonna pull it out and we're gonna pull it forward so we can knit our first stitch because we're going to need to do a knit one purl one rib uh, or K1 P1 which is what the pattern refers to it as. Um, so how I like to do this is I take the needle and I put it through so we have our X like that. We're going to grab our yarn, not our tail, don't grab your tail. It's happened to the best of us where we start knitting with the tail and not the yarn. Before we put our needle in we want to make sure that the yarn from the yarn ball is coming from the back and then our needle tip is kind of going underneath it. Um, if we don't do that we're going to get a loop which we don't want. So the yarn's kind of coming from this back stitch through this big loop um, so we can pull it easily to knit this way. So we've put our needle in from the front of the stitch to the back of the stitch. We're going to take the yarn, we're going to put it around the needle like that. We're going to take the needle, push it towards ourselves, and pull it off like that. Then we're going to do a purl. So we're going to take the yarn from the back, we're going to move it to the front. We're going to take the needle and we're going to take it from the back to the front of the stitch by going like that kind of stabbing it towards yourself. We're going to take the yarn and it's going to go over top of the needle. We're going to scooch it backwards like this and then the stitch pops off. So we're going to do another knit so yarn goes to the back. We stab it through, it goes around, push it backwards. We have our loop, it comes off. Yarn goes to the front to purl. So we'll do a stab it towards ourselves. Yarn goes over the top and then up like this. Yarn goes to the back to do another knit. Like this. Now at this stage, because I have a little bit of fabric, I'm going to grab my stitch marker, which has been waiting patiently over here and I'm just going to unclip it and clip it to my knitting. The reason I prefer a clippy stitch marker for Working Magic Loop is because if I put a stitch marker that's just round on to the Magic Loop needle it's just going to hang out here which bothers me that it clanks around. So you can use a safety pin, you can use an earring, you can use a fancy stitch marker, um, whatever works for you. And I just take it and I just clip it normally as close to what would be my first stitches as I can. Um, so when I come back around, I know that this is the beginning. But again, personal preference. So I waited till this point because then I have like some fabric I can put it into. If you put it right into the stitches, it'll make them hard to work. We're just gonna keep knitting and purling in rib until we get to the end of uh, this needle and then I will show you how to turn around and go the other way. Okay, so when you get to the end of this needle, depending on how well you've divided your stitches, you might be ending on a knit and you might be ending on a purl. I would suggest ending on a purl just because it's a knit one, purl one pattern and it'll be easier to keep straight in your head. If you haven't ended on a purl, you can kind of move stitches around by just taking this needle and just pulling it through. 
neat. This is a new cable. It doesn't want to go. Ah. <laughs> you can just take it, pull the needle through, and then these stitches will now be on this side of the hat. If you have worked things out properly that you've ended on a purl, I'm just going to knit these last couple of stitches, or I'm going to work these last couple of stitches. So knit, and I'm going to take my yarn, move it to the front. I'm going to do this last purl. So this guy's got too much cable and no stitches. So we're going to take this, I'm going to flip it, and we're going to, you can either push the needle this way through that one, or you can grab the end of the needle and pull it through. So now the needle is up here. And then we will grab the back needle and we'll pull it out. Um, we're going to take it under the yarn so we can knit. And we're all ready to go again. So we're going to continue the Knit One Pearl One pattern because we have only done that for half of the hat. So yarn around, through, off, yarn to the front, that way, yarn to the back, over, through and off, yarn to the front, through, over, out. So we'll keep doing that until we get to the very end of the needle. We've come to our last two stitches. We're going to take our yarn. We're going to work them. So knit and then purl. So now we have the same situation we had before where the needle in our left hand uh, has too much cable and no needles, or not needles, has too much cable and no yarn. So we're going to flip our knitting like we did before. And we can see all our little clippy marker so we know that this is the beginning of our work. So we're going to push the needle through and we're ready to work another round. So oops. <laughs> I'm going to take the back needle, we're going to pull it forward, put it through. So we're going to take the yarn, it's going to go over through and off to knit, stab forward, over, through, off. So we're going to keep working in ribbing until we have the designated amount for the size we're working. Um, for the toddler size that I'm making, it the pattern tells you to knit an inch of ribbing. So I'm going to keep knitting until I have an inch of ribbing. If you're knitting the adult size, it will be an inch and a half. So I will keep working away on this ribbing. You keep working away on yours and I will meet you back here so I can show you how to transition to the larger needles and to the body of the hat. Okay, so we have our inch of ribbing here that we knit on our US sixes on our four millimeter needles. It's now time for us to switch to our larger needles to knit the body of the hat. The reason we knit the ribbing on a smaller needle is so the ribbing is tighter and smaller and it will allow the hat to stay on the head a little bit easier. Um, if you are using interchangeables, you can just switch the tips off by unscrewing them or however your interchangeable set allows you to switch. If you're just using a regular 32 inch circular, you can just knit uh, like you would as if we were pulling from the back needle but with a new needle. Um, so pretending that these are six, um, still are sixes, just to kind of show what I mean, I have a different needle. It's not 32 inches, but 
if you were just to knit on, you would just grab your new needle and start knitting here instead of pulling the back needle forward to knit off of this needle. So to switch needles, that's how you could do that. If you also wanted to switch from a US 6 to a US 8 without having to just knit onto a new needle, or if you don't have interchangeables, you can also just go through and like slip them all onto a new needle, just like this. Um, you would want to slip them purlwise so we don't twist any of the stitches. So you would just kind of like put the needle in like we were purling, like so. And then all the stitches would end up here and you could work it just like we had previously with pulling the back needle forward to knit off of the front needle. But I've switched to my US 8 tips. So now we're gonna do the setup rows for the hat. The setup rows put in the really nice kind of garter panel that goes up the front of the hat that just adds a little bit of interest while knitting and also visually. Um, depending on your size, you're gonna need to knit a different amount of stitches because I am knitting the toddler size, I'm gonna knit 24 stitches and then put in a marker. Um, the pattern will tell you how many stitches you need to knit. Um, so I'm just gonna grab the back needle. It might be a little bit tight since we've switched needles um, and these were knit with a smaller needle. So it might just be a little bit tight on this round. That's totally normal. So we're gonna do our setup round. We put our needle in as if we were to knit. We're gonna take the yarn and go under and around like we have before. But instead of purling the stitch like we've done for the other rounds, we're gonna put the needle in and knit again. We are still gonna to have to purl later on in this hat, but for right now we won't have to. my 24th stitch. We now need to take a marker and put it in here so we can um, know where our garter panel will start and end, which will be between the stitch and the stitch. Okay, so I have one of my little Firefly Note kitty cat markers. You can use anything you can use. Um, if you have more of these like clippy markers, you can use one of those and just put it on the needle. We do want a, a marker that will go on the needle instead of a clippy one. Uh, because it will be easy to lose your place if the marker isn't there. Um, so you just want something to sit on your needle. Yarn, uh, I've seen people use paper clips, earrings, whatever you have handy. I just happen to have some markers. Um, so once you've put that in, we're just gonna keep knitting around till the end of our needle. And then we will continue to knit on the other side of the hat. So we've gotten to our last stitch. So we're gonna knit it like we have for the rest of the row. And we're gonna switch over like we have for the ribbing where we just flip it over. And I like pull the needle through. Um, again, stitches will probably be a little bit tight. This next round they won't be because the stitches will be the size of the US 8 needle instead of the US 6, which is what the ribbing was. But I'm gonna pull this back needle forward to knit this guy here, like we have previously. So, just take the yarn, and you pull this needle through, make sure that this yarn isn't going under and over the cable. So we wanna prevent those yarn overs. We're just gonna knit to the end, the other half of our hat.
we've reached the end of our row and flip it over like we have before pull that front needle through scooch it on in you can see it goes in a lot easier now because they're all the right size so at this point we have to knit what is marked as round one in the pattern we were just setting up for the garter ridge so the garter is going to go from the beginning of your round to this marker um, this will stay the garter panel everything else will stay knit until we have reached the length for the decreases so for this first round we're going to purl to here and then from here we're going to knit around and then for round two we'll knit and then continue knitting all the way around so taking our yarn making sure it's going to go under the needle take this needle pull it out because we're going to purl I'm going to put the needle in purl wise like that instead of knit wise so we're snapping it towards ourselves. we're going to grab the yarn and we're going to purl like we have previously for the ribbing I'm just going to snug that up a little bit just going to stab wrap drag So now we've reached the last stitch that we're going to purl before our marker. So we're just going to purl this like we have before and take it off. And before I move the marker over, I'm just going to take my yarn and move it to the back so I don't forget. I slip that marker over and then we are going to keep knitting to the end of our needle. So we've reached the end of our needle, and just like all the other times, we're going to flip it over. We are going to pull this needle through, push it on in, and then pull this back needle forward. And we are going to knit to the end of this needle. Okay, so we've reached the last stitches. So we're gonna knit these like we have before. Turn it around, pull our needle through, push the last little bit in there. So as you can see, because we purled, we have this nice little ridge here. And because we're knitting in the round, we have to do garter by knitting and purling one row. Um, or knitting one row and then purling one row. If we were knitting flat, you could just knit all the way around and this garter fabric would form automatically. That's one of the really cool things about knitting in the round is that you will get stockinette stitch, which is this, um, if you just knit every row. Um, but in order to get garter, you have to purl. So that's why we put that purl ridge in there. So we're now going to knit this entire row and then we're going to do the same row we did before again. So uh, round two. We're going to knit all the way around, so like before, uh, we're going to pull the yarn under, take the needle, because we're knitting, I'm just going to put that over so I can pull it to the back easy. Okay, there we go, but it isn't around the cable, which is why I was manipulating it before. So we're going to wrap it around. Okay, so we've reached right before our little marker again, so we're going to knit that last stitch. We're going to pass the marker over from our left needle to our right needle, just like we did before. And then we're going to keep knitting. So 
also like before, we will knit our last stitch before the end of the row, turn it around, and pull the cable, and then push the needle in that way, grab the back needle, pull it forward, and we're going to continue with this round, which is just all knitting, so we're going to knit just like we did before. Two, so we'll knit that last stitch and we'll turn it around ready to work the next round which is round one again so we're gonna do round one which is purling to this marker knitting around and then we're gonna repeat round two which we just did so which is knitting all the way around we're gonna keep doing that until the hat has reached our our desired length which for my toddler size is five inches from the ribbing upwards when you're measuring, don't measure over the garter panel because it can be a little bit shorter. Um, so I would suggest, because our hat's split in half, you flip it over and measure it on the back uh, where all of the stockinette is, you will get a much clearer measurement. So if you measure from the bottom of the ribbing to where your knitting ends, you'll get a more accurate measurement. So keep knitting around till you have whatever your desired length is and I will see you back here so we can work on the decreases. Welcome back everybody. So we have knit our hat to the designated length that it says in the pattern, uh, measuring from the cast on edge to the top, but using the back and not the garter section. So as you can see, the back is much longer. The garter will stretch out when you wear it. So it will stretch to be the same length as the back, but that's why we measured the back. So you can see there's a clear uh, height difference in the gauge, but uh, we are all ready to work our decreases now. Um, the pattern gets you to knit one more purl row um, and then the knit all the way around before we get to doing the decreases. So if you are not, if you haven't just finished a purl row and are ready to work knit row, um, go ahead and do that and we'll meet you back here. If you are ready to do the decreases, uh, pick up your knitting. <laughs> And we're going to do a setup round where we knit around and place markers um, and do some decreases. Because we are working magic loop and not on double points, which are these guys, we're not working on double points or a 16 inch circular needle, we won't need to switch to double points at the end of this. The great thing about working magic loop is that because we have extra cable, as this gets smaller, we can still keep using the same needle. Uh, yeah, so we're going to do our setup row. We're going to knit the designated amount of stitches. We're going to knit two together and we're going to place a marker, which in the pattern is designated as PM. Um, I'm knitting the toddler size, which is the second, so I'm going to knit 10 stitches. I have my 10 stitches. I'm going to knit two together, or K, K2 TOG, as the pattern abbreviation says. So I'm not going to knit this first stitch. I'm going to knit the second guy. So I'm going to take my needle. I'm going to put it in to this stitch like I was going to knit. And I'm going to make sure that I go through both the stitches, as you can see there. Um, and then I'm going to wrap around like I would for a knit. Pull that through. It's just going to hop off like that. And they're going to grab a marker. We're going to put it on our needle. You want to make sure it is a different marker than the marker that designates your garter section or the beginning of your round. Um, you want to be able to keep those all kind of separate. You don't need fancy markers though. If you have like different yarn or an earring or whatever, just make sure you know um, which marker is which. So we're going to knit 10 more stitches. Okay, 
Okay, so we've knit our 10 more stitches or whatever your amount is. Um, I'm two stitches before our marker that designates this garter panel. So I'm just going to knit two together like that. And it's gonna come off my needle. Uh, because we have a marker already here, I'm not gonna put down a new marker. I'm just gonna move this marker over and then I'm going to knit 10 more stitches. Okay, so we can tell that the end of the row is here. Luckily, I have two stitches uh, before the end of like this half of the hat. So instead of putting a marker in here that would just hang out on the cable, similar to like if we put in a marker at the beginning of the round, um, I'm not going to put a marker in, but I know that when I get to the end of this half, I'm going to do a decrease. If it makes your life easier to put in a marker, go for it. Um, but that's how I like to do that. I don't put a marker at the end because um, I know I'm going to decrease there. Over and push this needle through. Pull the needle from the back and I'm going to knit 10 more stitches. So if you happen to have more than two stitches at the end of that needle, you can always uh, pull the cable through and move stitches from this side over to this side um, so you know that you have the right amount of stitches here if you weren't going to place a marker. Um, if that makes sense. I hope it does. Okay, so we are two stitches before the end of our round or row. Um, so I'm gonna knit those two stitches together like we did before. Because I know that this cap marker and the garter panel be on the front is the beginning of a new row. I'm not gonna put a marker in here either. So we've now divided our hat into six even sections. You should have if you did what I did and left the markers off of this end and this end, you will have four markers on your needles. Uh, that will show we, you where you need to decrease going forward. Um, but we are doing a rest round instead of another decrease round now. Uh, the reason we do this is so we don't have too rapid of a decrease. If we decrease too fast, it becomes a cone shape and that's not what we want. Unless you're making a gnome hat, which is also a cool idea. If you want to make a gnome hat, you can leave the rest rows out. Um, but if you're making a normal hat, we're going to do our purl, and then we get to here, and then knit around rows. So I'm going to make sure that my yarn is going under my needle, isn't caught up in any loops. Put that into purl. we've purled to our first marker, we're just going to slip it from the left needle to the right needle. We're still purling, um, so we're just gonna keep purling until we reach that second marker. Um, in the pattern, SM is what's abbreviated for a slip marker. So when you see that, it just means that you're gonna move the marker from your left needle to your right needle. Okay, so we've made it to our second marker, which tells us uh, that we're at the end of this garter panel. So we're going to move our yarn from the front to the back. We're going to move the needle from the left, or the marker from the left needle to the right needle. And now we're going to switch to knitting till the end of the needle. And then we're going to turn the hat over and knit the entire other half of the hat.
actually finished the first rest round, which is the purling knitting round. Just pulling my needle through, trying to not hit the table so it doesn't make a loud noise. All right, so now we're going to knit a decrease round uh, that's going to be all knitting. So we're gonna knit till two stitches before a marker. We're going to knit these two guys together. We're gonna move this over. We're going to knit to two stitches before this marker, decrease there, slip it over, and then knit to two stitches before the end of the round and knit those together. And we're gonna repeat the thing on the other side. So, making sure our yarn isn't caught in our cable. The yarn around through. two stitches before the marker. Going to go into that second stitch, knit them together, go around and off. We're gonna slip the marker over. stitches before the end. We're just going to knit those together. All right, and we're going to do the same thing on this half of the hat. So we are going to keep repeating these two. Oops, where's my yarn? We're going to keep repeating these two rounds, the knitting decrease round and then the purl and knit rest round until we have reached the designated amount of stitches um, that would be on the needles for the size that you are making. Um, because we are knitting again on magic loop, we don't need to switch to double points at any time. So we're just gonna keep repeating these two rounds, the knit decrease round and the purl knit rest round three times total. So this is once the decrease round is the second part. So. Um, we're going to repeat this three times. The pattern breaks down how many stitches per section you will have, so you don't have to count how many times you actually have to repeat it. You just have to make sure you decrease until there are, for me, it's till there's eight stitches in each section. Right, so I'm going to keep repeating these sections, and then once I have reached that point, I will come back and we'll move on to the next section. Okay, so we've made it through three rounds of decreases. We have, for me, it's eight stitches between each marker. Um, so eight stitches between each marker. Um, depending on your size, it might be different, um, but we're all good to go on the next section. So the next section, we, oh, Jesus. So we're all good to go on the next section. So in the section before, we were doing a decrease round and then a rest round. We're now going to stop doing the rest rounds so we can have a slightly steeper slope at the top of the pattern. So um, we've just finished our knit decrease round. So we are going to, the next round, we're going to purl till two stitches before our marker. Okay, and now we're going to purl two together, similar to knitting two together, except we're purling. So um, we don't have to go to this stitch, we can start with the, uh, the first stitch. So we're gonna go through like we were to purl, and we're also gonna loop in the second stitch. And we're gonna put the yarn over just like we normally would, and then pull it backwards, take it off. Nope, we're still purling. <laughs> um, yeah, we're still in this section, so we're still purling. So, purl to two stitches before our garter marker. 
And that we're, oh, that's three, one more. Okay, so through that one, through that one, over, through, and off. Okay, so now that we're switching back to our knitting section, yarn's gonna go to the back, marker's gonna go over, then we're gonna knit We're going to knit to two stitches before the end. Okay. And we'll knit two together. Knit again until two stitches before our marker. We're going to knit two together and then we're going to slip our marker. Flip our marker. it over again okay so now we're going to do our round that we did before where we knit all the way around and we're going to knit two together before the marker Okay, so we're going to knit two together on those last two stitches. So we're gonna keep repeating the purl knit decrease round and also the full knit decrease round that we just did until we have six stitches left. It's gonna be six stitches total. So we currently have six sections. We're gonna to wanna to keep decreasing until we have one stitch in each of these sections. So I will keep decreasing. And we'll meet you back there. We're almost there. So close. All right, we did it. So we have six stitches, uh, one in each of these sections between the markers. So now we need to wrap this hat up. So we're gonna grab the yarn and a pair of scissors. We're gonna leave a decent tail. It's not a scientific process, but a decent tail. And we're gonna cut the yarn. And we're going to grab a darning needle of some kind. They come in all shapes and sizes. You just want to make sure that it's big enough for yarn to go through here and that it's dull. You don't want a sharp needle. You'll end up poking through your yarn. Um, if you don't have one of these and you have a crochet hook, you can also use that. I've seen people take like paper clips and turn them into darning needles. So all we need is something, it's easiest with a darning needle, but all we need is something to get the yarn through the remaining stitches. So we're gonna scooch everything over, maybe. Okay, so we're gonna take our yarn, put our needle through there, pull it off, pull the yarn through. We have a marker, so marking. Marker can come off. Needle. I'm just putting it in purl wise um, because it stops the stitches from being twisted. But I would just pick one direction to go through. It's the top of your hat. No one will probably see it. 
Um, and if it looks really bad, you can put a pom pom on it. It'll be fine. stitch all right so we've pulled the yarn all the way through Oop. pulled the yarn all the way through it should look like this now what I like to do because I'm a little bit paranoid about my yarn or my knitting and the top of my hat coming undone before I go and I weave this yarn into the inside of the hat which I'll show you how to do in a sec I like to tie a tiny knot because um, it makes me feel more secure. Uh, knots in knitting are tremendously recommended. They're weaving in the end afterwards. It's just kind of like for my well-being, state of mind. Um, so I've just gone underneath the legs of a couple of stitches here. Just gonna take my yarn, gonna wrap it around the needle, pull the needle through like this. Just, I was just holding onto the yarn to keep it tight. Can okay, I see it's just kind of formed a little knot there. Then I'm just gonna take my needle and I'm just gonna go in through the stitch that's next to my knot. I'm gonna go inside the hat. I'm gonna pull the yarn to the inside. There you go. So we're just gonna weave in the ends and then this hat is good. So everyone weaves and ends a little bit differently. Um, the main, the reason we weave and ends is because we want to secure the yarn. We don't want it to come undone when it, the hat is being washed or worn. Um, you generally want, I would say, at least that much yarn woven in. Um, you can't just do one or two stitches. It will come undone. Um, you'll have a little tail sticking out. It's not a great time. Um, with this hat, because the garter is the front, I'm going to aim towards the back in the stockinette section. So I'm just going to turn this guy around. It's also easier in here. Okay, so I just kind of pick a couple of stitches. This guy was one, well, so this is like one of the happy faces of the stockinette side. So I'm just going to go down into that, pull the yarn through, and then I'm going to go over for a bit and then down a bit. Um, so we had the smile and we're going to go into the frown that's next to it and go up into that. The reason we go different directions is because it blends in better with the knitting. Where are we? There we are. So I'm going to go over. I normally go over like for two or three stitches. There's another frown. And what I'll do on this next smiley face or smile is I'm just going to go down through that one to the one below. Really what we're trying to do is just make sure that this is worked in. So while it's being worn, it's not going to come loose. So now I'm going to go over here to the frown and then down into the smile again. And like, there's lots of different ways to weave in ends when it comes to knitting. There's different ways when it comes to crochet. There are ways to knit in your ends as you're going, but when it comes to the ends of projects, um, those can't really be used. And when you're learning, it's an important skill to have. So I would recommend just learning to weave your ends in. It makes it look like a a better product at the end.
Okay, so once you've woven in enough that you feel secure, I'm just gonna go down one more set and do a little bit down here. Okay, so now that we've woven in enough that we feel secure with our knitting, I'm gonna take the yarn out of the darning needle and I'm not gonna cut the yarn right next to the hat. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail. One, because I have to block this. Um, it's an acrylic hat, so blocking is just gonna be machine wash and drying it um, because that's how the product's gonna be used and cared for. Um, but also, um, and through that blocking, the gauge will kind of shift around and even out. Um, I also do this because it's harder for this end to kind of work its way out. If it's longer, if it's nice and short, it'll pop through to the other side very easily. So the only other end we have to weave in is our brim. Uh, earlier, because my cat was trying to eat the tail, I kind of just tied this up into a knot. So I'm just gonna untie this really fast. Cats are a blessing and also a curse. Okay, so if for some reason your cat has also eaten the end of your yarn, you've left a long enough tail that you can trim it, go for it. You just want to be able to get your yarn through your needle easily without splitting it like I just did. So I just wet that with my mouth. You can do water or whatever you want to do. Just keeps everything together so you can get it through the darning needle. So now when it comes to weaving in, uh, when it comes to weaving in ends in ribbing, I do it a little bit differently than the up and down smiley of the stockinette. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna go over to this column that goes up. I'm gonna twist it around here and then I'm gonna come down this side um, with the end. So, through that side of the stitch. So I just hold it down because it allows it to have, or it makes it easier to pull it through. So, so I'm just going in the same direction every time because I'm gonna wrap the yarn around that one column of stitches. Well, I guess it's half a half a stitch because we're just going up the right side of the stitch. Okay, so when we get to the end, we're not gonna wrap around. I guess we could go up here, but we're just going to take the needle through. So we're on the other side and I'm gonna do the same thing. So we're going, we went up this side we're gonna go down the other side. I Once I've put my yarn through, I flip it around because it's easier for me to kind of keep things straight and easier on my hands. Um, I'm gonna go from the inside of the stitch to the outside and just keep that consistent, trying not to stab other parts of my hat. Now, if you feel like this isn't enough, before you get to the very end, you can turn your hat around again. Um, you can take your yarn and take it through the garter section or the the pearl that's next to, because this is ribbing, this is knit pearl. So we're gonna take it through the pearl over to the next column and then you can do the same thing. I like to cut the end once it's up near the top of the column. The reason I like to cut the yarn when it's up here is it means the tail's gonna be up on the inside of the hat and isn't gonna stick out near the bottom of the brim at all. So. I'm gonna cut that. I'm gonna turn the hat back to its right side. I forgot to take my little clippy marker off, so we're gonna do that. 
And now you have a finished hat. So if you want it at this point, you can add a pom-pom to the top or it's good to go as is. I'm going to block this, like I said, because it's acrylic. I'm going to machine wash and dry it. Um, it's for my gift pile, so that's how it will probably be treated by whoever receives the hat. So that's why I'm going to block it. Um, with acrylic, you can also steam it, um, which helps block it. But there's other videos on how to do that more specifically. Um, but congratulations, you need a hat. Yay! Go you. Now rock your warm head and your bad self.